got the sweetest disposition. One guess, guess who? Who never, never starts an argument? Hmm? Who never shows a bit of temperament? Who's never wrong but always right? Who'd never dream of starting a fight? Who gets stuck with all the bad luck? No one but Donald Duck. Now, Miss Daisy Duck, please tell me what happened in your own words. Well, Doctor, I came to tell you about my boyfriend, Donald Duck. Now, now, madam, no names. All right, Doctor. Well, one beautiful spring day, Donald, uh, I mean, my boyfriend and I were walking in the park. Now in the window on the 99th floor of a tall building was a beautiful flower in a pot. It toppled out of the window and fell like a meteor. Right on my boyfriend's head. I tried to revive him. Finally, he came to and looked at me. I smiled back reassuringly, and then it happened. It seemed as though we were hearing some strange voice. Donald Duck, you are the greatest singer in the world. With that, he got up, dusted himself off, gave me a low, gracious bow, and started to sing. When you wished upon a star, shining brightly from afar. It was beautiful. I stood enchanted. Tears filled my eyes. Will come to you. As he finished, I applauded. I was so proud of him. But when I rushed forward to clasp his hand, he gave me a cold, icy stare, as though he didn't know me. And before I could say how I request, he was snatched up by a famous theatrical agent. The flower from his head fell at my feet, a symbol of my lost love. I took it home. I put it in a vase on the mantel. It was all I had to remember him by, because I never saw him again after that day, except in advertisement, on labels, in society columns, and on flashing marquees. If your heart is in your dream, no request is too extreme. When you wish upon a star This golden voice on the radio only made it harder to bear. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. I didn't want to live. I was going crazy, man, jealous. I tell you, I was insane. Suddenly, I was snapped out of it by a newsboy's voice. Donald Duck sings in person tonight at Radio City. I rushed for my rap. This would be his first public appearance, my first chance to see him. But by the time I reached Radio City, a long line of humanity had formed. And I was too late to get inside. So I went to the rear and waited at the stage door. At last, I should see him. But no crowds formed to block my view. Thousands clamored to get his autograph. Hoping to get a glimpse of him, I waited through the summer and through the winter. I walked out front, where at least I could see his picture. Donald, speak to me. By the time summer came again, I was determined to see him. To get by the doorman, I first tried pleading. Disguise, force. All with the same result. But as I was coming home that night, I met him face to face. Donald, darling, I've missed you terribly. I'm so happy for you. 
but he gave me that same cold, icy stare again. I fell at his feet and poured out my soul to him. Oh, tears. I told him I was hungry and starving for his love. So he threw me a dime and continued on his way. But as soon as I gained control of myself, I decided it was time to come to see you, Doctor, for a solution to my problem. Well, it's obvious the hit on the head caused your boyfriend to go through a complete mental and physical change. I can help you, but first, you have a big decision to make. Do you want the world to have him and his beautiful golden voice, or do you want him back again for yourself? It's either the world or you. Me! 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 Please calm yourself, Miss Duck. Here is my professional advice. I suggest you take that same flower, put it in a heavy pot, and then if the time... And if he should... Then now you understand... Thank you, Doctor. I'll do it tonight. Stars are kind. They bring to those who love the sweet fulfillment of their secret longing. Like a bolt. Thank <laughs> you. 